I'm Chuck. This is What is the Wheel. Today we're going to take a Predator motor apart in preparation for hot rodding it. We're going to try and do it pretty fast because it's about 30 degrees in the shot today. All right, we're going to try to take this apart pretty quick. Uh, I've never taken one of these apart before. I have taken apart a lot of small engines, just not one of these. I did take the carburetor off the other day, but I went ahead and stuck it back on there to, so that uh, the time to take it apart wouldn't be a lie. Uh, also, there's some people who maybe never done it before, and so we should really start from the beginning if all possible. I am going to use some power tools to do this to help speed things up. You don't have to. Uh, you can just use hand tools. That would do the job in most cases. <clears throat> all right. So let's go ahead and get the carburetor off. And this is a drill, not an impact. Uh, I like using these for a lot for small hardware. Because you're unlikely to break anything with a drill. Uh, this filter box has got a vent on the back side of it. You'll pop that loose and then the box should come off. Go ahead and have a spot for all the stuff that you're not going to put back on. Uh, that way you're not cluttering up your, as you can see, this space is already pretty cluttered up. You're not cluttering up your space any worse than you have to. I pull the air, the uh, carburetor out a little bit. Uh, this line comes off. There's also a spring on there. Just pop that off. Take your fuel line loose. Take the carburetor off. All right. Then you've got easier access to your cover bolts. Uh, your cover bolts are going to use an 8 millimeter. And I think this thing will be strong enough to pop these loose. And be sure to have a spot for all of your bolts and nuts so that you don't lose them. Um, you also want to flip your motor over. Oh, look at that one. It's not cooperating. That one is tight. Ooh, like I smoked the motor. Okay. Try it again. You always want to hang on to all your screws and stuff, put them in a specific spot so you don't lose any of them. One left. And you also want to be careful to make sure that, uh, check the lengths, because some screws are going to be different lengths than others. And, uh, I know like on the old L-head Briggs, there, I believe two of the head bolts were different lengths. And you could mess something up. Alright, so this is your blower cover, which you're going to reuse. It's got your kill switch on it. Which is, let's see here. wires loose and we're not going to reuse anything except maybe this kill switch so we want to take this loose right here like that okay now that's free and I'm going to take this cover off you're definitely going to reuse the cover because it's an air cooled engine so you got to have the cooling fan uh, you got to have a duct which is what this thing is it's ducting that air over the air cooled engine which is also why it's got all these <coughs> fins and stuff on it. So I'm going to hang on to that. Go ahead and take the gas tank off. In my case, I'm not going to reuse the gas tank. Primarily just because I think the motor looks better without a tank on it, so I'm going to use a remote mount tank on this one and just have a flat plate where the tank was for my uh, fuel pump and that'd probably be about the only thing that goes on there. Let's see if we can reach in here. Spark plug boot out of the way. Put that right in there. Tank has vent line, 
and it's got a little pinched piece that fits in to keep it from moving around next to the carburetor and then the fuel tank's off. All right. We're also not going to use the mufflers. Let's get the muffler. Oop, it's got some big bolts on it. Let's see, what is that? Let's go with, let's try 14. Is that a 14? Nope, 13. There we go. I'm smacking these, these wrenches with my hand. Uh, it's a bad idea. Don't do it. It's a good way to get yourself some early onset arthritis, but since I already have it, you know, it doesn't really matter anymore. We're not going to be reusing the muffler either. take this little cover off. This piece of sheet metal, you want to keep it on there, it's for cooling purposes, and I might not need to remove it, but I'm going to go ahead and take it off, because it might get in my way when I take the head off. As a matter of fact, it probably will get in my way when I take the head off. Help on some police belts. There it is right there. And I also highly recommend taking pictures or shooting video when you do something like this. So when you go to put it back together again and you can't, it's like, I can't have this thing fit on here. You can go look at the photos and go, oh, well, it goes right on like that. Because uh, as often happens, you, you're like, oh, I'm going to take this apart and put it right back together again. And then three months later, you have not yet reassembled it. And you cannot remember how any of this stuff went on here. And uh, I've... I always feel like, oh, I've got a lot of experience. I'm not going to have any trouble with this. I'll be able to put this thing right back together. And man, let me tell you what, I don't know how many times I found myself with a, a wiring loom with 20 connections on it and no idea how to stick it back together again. And then you just got to start test fitting and messing around until you figure out how everything fits it's so much easier just to get it right the first you know have photos so you can get it right the first time all right so we're down to we'll go ahead and take the governor arm off it's pinched on here a little bit so we'll unpinch it maybe all right, let's do. There it goes. Definitely not going to be using that anymore. <clears throat> Got this little plastic piece right here. We're not going to be using that spacer for the carburetor. We're not going to be using that. have this this is your uh, safety switch or a low oil low oil uh, we're not going to use that either let's go ahead and take this off right. and there's a couple of ways uh, you can go about this uh, oil safety switch here. Some people just cut the wire and leave the whole thing in there. My plan is to take it, once we get it apart, I'm going to take the sensor out and tap this hole and put a plug in it. And then my other plan is, I, at least at this until I get it apart and change my mind, uh, I'm going to use, I need a, a pulse source for a crankcase pressure. I'm going to use the governor. Uh, a hole the governor was in. I'm going to tap it out. If I can find a fitting that'll work is close enough to the right size. I got plenty of material here so I can probably drill this thing out to a, a usable size 
and uh, that'll be good. Then I won't have to drill a hole el anywhere else in the block in order to get that out. So we've got almost everything off of here. I'm going to take this off and use the actual impact for that. Good boy. <clears throat> That's a bigger size. Let's see. I got a 17. 19 to 19. All right. Can I fit in there. Might need an extension. Yep, need an extension. That's fine. I got this is a, a chrome extension. They tell you not to use those. I've never had an issue with one failing. They always say not to use them, but I've, I've never I've never had any trouble with it myself. Um, look at that, boy, that came right off. You're going to need this. This is the what the clutching mechanism for your recoil starter engages on. Not going to need that. And this flywheel. Does not, I was expecting to see a set of bolt holes in order to pull this thing off. I do not see those, so I'm going to have to improvise that, and we'll figure that out in a minute. Okay. And then we need to take valve cover off because two of the head bolts are in, under the valve cover. So I'm not gonna they make some pretty fancy valve covers That's some clear and stuff like that I will not be using one of those because that's not gonna make it any faster and that's my main concern All right. valve cover off careful the valve cover gasket you should probably always use new gaskets and I think I got a new gasket in the set but if I don't, let me just reuse that one. Hang on to it. All right. We've got our four bolts here. Our rockers, valve springs, and this stuff, this head. I'm going to port this head out some. So I'm going to take all this stuff off so I can clean it after I get done grinding on it. And we'll go ahead and take the bolts out. I managed to get the right size. Look at that, perfect. Okay. And the little wrench. All right. So I'm going to just break them loose, crisscross it. Now, putting it back together, I wouldn't use an impact or reassemble it because, uh, especially head bolts. You got to torque them, so you don't want to goof up your, screw up your head, your seal with your head. Everybody loose? All the way down. Definitely don't want to lose our head bolts. And actually, I'm going to lay the head bolts right here, so I can just make sure, because they might not be the same length. And there we go. Take a look here. There's push rod. Another push rod in here. Let's see if these bolts are the same length. All right, so all the head bolts are the same length. So not a problem. Is the other push rod? Make sure you don't lose any of that stuff. And brand new, never run motor. All right, set that off to the side. Got a. Let's only use a single one. Yeah, we have one single uh, um, dowel pin to center the head on the block. And the last thing, move this gasket out of the way. The last thing we've got to do is get this flywheel off. And I'm going to pause for just a second. Back in the day, we used to take these things off. You would just stick a little crowbar behind it, and I had a tool that threaded on to the flywheel 
you put a little pressure on the flywheel, give that tool a tap and it would pop the flywheel right off. But before I do that, as exciting as it would be to break the thing on camera, uh, I'm going to just double check real quick and make sure that I'm taking it off the right way so I don't break anything. Okay, it's pretty much exactly what I thought. You we're just going to knock it off. Uh, back in the day, like I said, we would just, uh, I had tools, and here's some of them right here, that uh, threaded on to the crank and uh, gave you something to knock against so you wouldn't damage the threads. And of course, none of these fit. These are old uh, Tecumseh parts, which that company's not even in business anymore, I don't believe. And I got a bunch of different sizes, but I'm pretty sure this is a metric thread. So, what we're gonna use is the nut, as soon as I figure out where I put it. There it is, right there, okay. I'm gonna put the nut back on there. I'm gonna spin the nut down and leave just uh you want it a little bit above the crank so you not you don't accidentally hit the crank. And we'll also go ahead and probably not gonna hurt anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and take the coil off. And like I said, probably won't hurt anything, but let's go ahead and take it off. We have to take it off anyway because we're putting a different flywheel on here, and the odds of them being this this uh, flywheel and the replacement flywheel being exactly the same uh, diameter are low. So, and you got to reset your clearance anyway for the coil. I'll take these five-inch long screws out. Okay, get that out of the way. We'll just go ahead and set the coil out of the way. You don't need it right down here. Okay. We got that on there. Get all this junk out of the way. Get a big hammer. Three-pound hammer. Crowbar. Nice crowbar. If you are going to reuse this, when you put the crowbar behind the flywheel, don't put it where the magnet is. Uh, this one has a, the older flywheels, you know, the magnet was basically molded into the, into the flywheel itself. Pretty much just like that. Uh, the magnet was molded into the flywheel. A lot of the older uh, engines, the flathead motors, had aluminum flywheels on them instead of this big cast steel thing this thing has. And uh, they just molded the, the magnet right into it. And you didn't want to hit it because you would break it. You break the magnet. And what that would actually do is if you break the magnet, it causes a break in the magnetic field and the thing would, it wouldn't fire correctly. It wouldn't fire at the correct time. It wouldn't have the right duration. And it would, could maybe even make it fire twice. Although they'd be right on top of each other. That wouldn't matter too much. Okay, so we're going to put this under here. And see if I can lean on this hard enough to get a decent tap. Nope. Try to move this around so I can lean on it properly. Give it a nice hug. There we go. Not much of a hammer swinger with the left hand. Oh, you know, I said that earlier, that thing only had a single dowel for the, uh, the uh, center of the head on top of the block. There's actually the other dowel that popped out. Always want to double check, look around. That's why it's a great idea to have a bench that is tidier than this bench. So that when you do drop something, it doesn't vanish forever. All right. That flywheel we will not be, actually that's not that hidden. We'll not be using that again. All right. Turn the motor around. It's uh, all these bolts are 10 millimeter. Uh, you do, these are the kind of bolts you definitely want to check and make sure that they are There we go. You want to make sure that they're all the same length. Uh, if you got one that's longer or shorter, so you don't accidentally, especially put a long one in a place that a short one's supposed to go, because you might bottom it out, and if you try and run it in there, you could actually crack the block. All right. So and I'm going to crisscross this off. Let's go ahead and get a paper towel because this might have a little bit of oil in it. All right. 
So pick that one in each there. Alright, here we go. Just lay them down side by side to make sure that there's not any variance in their length. Okay, and those are all the same length. That's good. Add them to our pile of hardware. All right, we're going to slide this off. This uh, crank has a step in it. It does have a key in it. The step is high enough that it's probably not going, the seal's not going to contact the key. But I'm going to go ahead and take the key out anyway, just on the safe side. I found the easiest way to get the key out is to use a pair of uh, side cutters and just grab it and then rock the key up with the side cutters against the uh, crank. All right, now, fortunately, let's get this out here and give this a little prize. See if it doesn't pop right off. Yep, sure enough. Okay. Pop this right off. Yep, there was a little bit of oil in there. Okay. All right, and our cam has decided to already come out. It's already loose. Okay. Oh yeah, there is a big difference between the uh, stock and aftermarket cams. This was just gonna be a tear down, but let's look at that real close. Look at the difference in those two cams between there. Whoop, there we go, see if I can get them to focus. You can see stock cam right here, aftermarket cam right here. Look how much more duration you have. Uh, you have the actual, yeah, the actual uh, lift, uh, as it lifts, is much steeper and much faster, and you've got substantially more uh, duration. It's really obvious looking at them, the uh, difference between the two of them. So we will not be reusing that. Let's see if I'm a floor in here. Okay. All right. And kind of interesting. This thing is brand new, but we actually have a little bit of a uh, look at that. That's some schmutz in there. So we'll definitely that's a schmutz, a technical term. We'll um we'll definitely be cleaning this thing when we take it apart. We'll go ahead and clean it really good uh, before we put it all back together again. Just drop our tappets out. Where's it on that? Get that one out. All right. And we're going to take the motor around and get our crank, or get our crank, get our rod off the crank. And that looks like a 10. It's already in there. We're going we're gonna to be replacing the rod, so let's go ahead and take it out and then we'll drop, and then we can push the piston out and get the, the crank out of here and then we can access, uh, that is your oil sensor, we can access that and get it out also. And you want to be careful with these, um, all these machined edges, they can be pretty sharp, so be careful. Um, and another same thing with like bumping on tools with your palm of your hand and it's like do as I say not as I do uh, but it is a good idea to wear gloves uh, some type of PPE when you're when you're dealing with this stuff uh, so that you don't uh, give yourself hand cancer 10 years from now um, I think I probably already got it because when I, when I started working on this stuff we didn't wear anything. You might put on a pair of safety glasses if you're running a grinder, but it's like 30 years ago, we didn't wear you know, gloves, 
we had carburetor cleaner tanks that would you get the stuff on your skin and it would raise welt on you it was so strong and uh which of course it's better that those things are not available now and yep i had said that the <clears throat> the stock this is the stock rod versus the aftermarket rod okay stock rod versus aftermarket rod this is the dipper like i said it's the splash oiler this thing just dips into the oil and throws it everywhere and that's how the, the motor gets oiled well it's a, a plain dipper on this one but on the aftermarket rod it has this little scoop with a line or a hole going up into the big end bore and that acts it almost probably acts like a oil pump it's like that this thing is dipping into the oil hard and it's pushing it into this little scoop and pushing it right up into the big end to keep it oiled, which in this high performance ac application is great. So that's a that's a, a really uh, uh, cool feature of this rod, aside from the rod itself being stronger than the stock one. And then of course also you have a, a plain bearing uh, rather than uh, Babbitt bearings, uh, which will come with this. So this is an, also an improvement. All right, so we'll get the other half of the, come on, piston. All right, I'm just going to push the piston right out. Okay, rest of the rod. So like I said before, you have your single oil hole in the top uh, of the big end, and that's where all the lubrication for the big end of this uh, crank and rod goes. We have a, a three-ring piston. With a, or actually, I guess, really, technically, it's a two-ring piston because you've got your um, your oil scraper at the bottom, and that's just for oil control. Uh, so, in real serious race applications, this you might actually only have a single ring because the ring is friction. The ring is there's a, a layer of oil. It's not you know in theory touching the, the bore, but it's like um, the it the more rings you have, the better pressure control you got, but the more friction you have, the more power loss you have through that friction. All right, and so we've got our little uh, arrow, which is pointing up to, what does it point to? It's not pointing up to anything. It's just pointing up. And uh, the reason for that is the, <clears throat> the small end is not, typically it's not centered. It's actually off-center slightly, which is to help improve and reduce um, the piston push. So as the thing is coming up and down and doing this number right here, it's pushing, it's, it's at an angle like that, it's at an angle like that, and it's actually pushing the piston to the side slightly and causing the piston to cock. And by moving this uh, pivot point slightly off center, you can reduce or eliminate that. And uh, if you ever want to watch uh, some fun stuff, go watch uh, This Old Tony Uh, look up piston pin offset on YouTube and see the the, the argument between this old Tony and uh, David Freiberger from um, oh shoot what's that Motor Trend show uh, that he does the show where they they used to used to be him another guy would fix up old car and then drive it around I can't think of the name of the show but David Freiberger look him up and and this old Tony. There's a, a fun little internet war between the two of them over whether or not you can get more power by flipping the uh, offset of the piston the other direction, uh, which obviously you can't do on this motor because of the way the rod shape. So we're not going to worry about that. All right, now the crank should just come right out. And it did. Look at that. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. Got everything out except for the governor assembly right here. And uh, this um, low oil sensor. All right, so the low oil sensor, got two bolts holding it in. Just gonna take those loose, maybe. There we go. Oh, well, it's tight. And then it's still bolted through the block. What is that? 14? Is that a 14 over here? 13. Does that fit? Nope. Oh, okay. 
try 14. Yep, 14. So. All right. Wow, that wasn't even tight. Holy cow. Okay. And. That's gone. That's, we don't need that anymore. And the, the reason you're taking this out is because you're going to be racing around and the oil is going to slosh all up to one side or slosh to the other side or slosh this way. And it, this is going to think it's low and it's going to cause the motor to cut out. So you just want to take it off. You're not, you know, I, you're going, of course, you're going to check your oil, make sure you got plenty in there every time. So you shouldn't need this. All right. So this hole, I'm going to thread it for a pipe plug and just uh, use some RTV and seal that up. And then on the top, this rascal right here, we got to get that out. <clears throat> and it looks like it would just come right out like that. And it did. Shocking. All right. And then the last piece in here, this is the actual governor. This is the thing that spins around, and you've got these two little metal ears right here, and this little plastic push pin, this piece right here, and those little metal ears push on this pin, and that in turn pushed on that little L rod uh, that I just took out, and that would cause the, uh, it, it would put pressure on the throttle against the spring tension, and that was what governed your RPM, set the governing of your RPM. Now, Never taken one of these out before either, so let's see what we've got to do here. Oh boy. <clears throat> There's a little tiny snap ring in there. And if I was going to reuse this thing, which I'm not, I would probably. I don't know. Well, if I was trying to save it, I would maybe be a little more careful. If I, although, if I wasn't going to do anything with it, unless it was actually broken, I'm going to use a crow's foot. Actually, I'm going to use two of them. Use two crow's feet and turn to see, see what I'm doing. I'm just going to put them underneath this plastic gear like this. This one underneath this plastic gear like this. And just pop that thing out. Except I'm going to lay it down so I can actually lean on it. And it should come right out. Or break. One of the two. And we're going to go with uh, a break. Which is fine because I'm not planning on reusing it. And of course it's not cooperating. That's okay. Because it's coming out. All right. Now, of course, it did break it. That's fine. We've got our two ears, and uh, um, you have the expression that something is balls out. The, these would be the balls from back in the day. If you ever watch somebody with an old, um, uh, like an old steam-powered engine, and of course, that little centerpiece is still in there. So. See if we can get that thing popped out of there. Fortunately, most of my tools are too big for this kind of work. Let's see here. Here's the really boring part that is probably going to get deleted. Unless something, unless I injure myself, in which case I will definitely edit. Edit, 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 edit. edit. Edit, 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 edit. You know the thing is, I could leave it in here, but I just now I just can't do it. I got, I got to do, I got to get it out. I can't, I can't, I can't let it go. I'll know it's in there forever. It's baiting me. Ow! There we go. Look at that. Finally bent that little rascal. That was the thing that was causing all the trouble right there. All right, that's done. Now, <laughs> now the rest of it won't come out. Okay, there we go, done. Uh, there's a, what's left of the 
governor gear straighten the trash and got a couple of little washers in there make sure you take all those little washers out there's another one in there too make sure you take those out uh so you uh, they don't fall out later on and uh wreck your motor I used to have a gigantic magnet around here just for this kind of stuff but I have to see if this will work Success. All right, last one. All right, now your motor's apart. Now you start, do whatever you gotta do. We're, like I said, we're gonna thread this. We're gonna find something that fits this hole right here and tap this or drill it out and tap it uh, so I can put a, a pulse port in there. And then we'll start putting it back together again. All right, if you enjoy watching somebody struggle to take a motor apart, uh, like, subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff. I try and put stuff out every Friday, but it kind of just depends on when I get a chance to work on it. Uh, Y'all have a great day.